Hello and welcome to another edition of the Panthers Tracks podcast. I'm your host, Ellis Williams, joined as always by my mother's three favorite people, me, myself, and I. I'm coming to you from Boston. The Panthers, by the time you listen to this, will be preparing for a preseason game against the New England Patriots, which is set to kick off Friday night at 7 p.m., Today, we're going to talk about what I learned from the Panthers' two joint practices with the Patriots. They practiced in Foxborough at uh, 9 a.m. practices both days uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday. Of course, the multiple fights, fights on both days, Wednesday being a big brawl. We're going to get into a little bit of that as I package this discussion for you guys appropriately and we'll unpack that fight when I get to a player I want to talk about who was at the forefront of the scuffles, the melees, the chaos. Basically all what I want to do here for maybe a good 15, 20 minutes is discuss the good and the bad from these two joint practices with the Patriots player specific. I've got a list of about eight or nine good things I want to get through player wise and about five or six you know bad notes that I, I need to address uh based on players and situations and position rooms so let's start with some of the good and we're gonna jump off the top like we usually do talking quarterbacks baker mayfield it has been the worst kept secret in carolina that this would be baker mayfield's job starting job at some point it wasn't a matter of if it just was when Matt Rule said after Wednesday's practice that the team is not ready to announce a starter, but internally they believe they have a really good plan. Reading between the lines there, you would insinuate that the Panthers are ready to name Baker Mayfield their starter. Uh, perhaps it happens as early as pregame of the second preseason game. Maybe it's a little after. Maybe it's the day after. Uh, it's going to happen soon, though. And all the conversations I've had inside that building – all the off the record stuff indicates that this is where the quarterback competition was headed all along. They like what they have in Baker Mayfield and he's going to be the one to start week one against the Browns and his former team. So the NFL scheduling gods uh, pull off another genius week one game for the NFL and NFL fans. Talking about Baker Mayfield on the field at Panthers camp and the joint sessions with the Patriots He's underneath my good list, but not for impressive reasons. You know, it was a a rough couple of days for Baker, just in the sense that um, multiple two-minute drive opportunities, drives stalled out inside the 10-yard line. I don't think he scored a a touchdown in any of his four two-minute drive opportunities over the two days. Uh, a couple field goal attempts, a turnover on downs. Those are it, that's how this team's going to be judged is in the red zone. Do they have the, the players to score points? They're going to be able to move the ball between the twenties. What can they do inside the twenty? It's, I've said it on the podcast before, and it, it remains an unknown. We'll see. But Baker really is doing two things really well right now he's playing with urgency you can tell he's getting to the line of scrimmage and deciding where he wants to go with the football by surveying the matchups the the freedom that Ben McAdoo gives him to survey the line of scrimmage and and make some post-snap reads based on pre-snap information it's happening faster and and quicker he loves the middle of the field. He's going to have an eye for Shai Smith all year or whoever's playing that third receiver in the slot for him. Uh, Baker had a great rapport with Jarvis Landry in Cleveland. I watched that for two years on got to have it downs. Jarvis was their go-to guy, not necessarily because he was the best receiver on the team. Statistically, he was Odell Beckham Jr. Of course, was the best player on the team. He also missed a lot of time. Regardless, it was Jarvis who consistently opened up across the middle, like I said, especially on third downs. That's where Baker's eyes are going to go, and that's what we've seen with him and Shai Smith, whether it was the preseason game where Shai had two third down catches, you know, both gains of 12 yards or more, 
and they were short routes. You know, he's opening up on unders and slants and, and get, picking up some yaks and yards after the catch once the pass is complete. And that continued at Patriots camp. Shai Smith is also on my list. Uh, I, I, I want to – let's just talk about him quickly. We'll table the Baker stuff for a second because I think all these receivers and passing game stuff are, are all related anyway, right? So Shai Smith – also look at as a punt returner against Washington. He might be challenging Andre Roberts for that role. It's going to be interesting how many receivers this team keeps. Say they keep six and Roberts is the sixth. That would mean Rashard Higgins is on the team. That would mean Shai Smith makes the roster. I don't know what that means for guys like Brandon Zelstra. We shall see. Um, but I'm thinking if they keep six, it would be DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Terrace Marshall, Rashard Higgins, Shai Smith, and Andre Roberts. We'll talk about another receiver a little bit later, but Higgins deserves some flowers here as he's just, you know, continued to have a better day on top of a better day. He's consistently open. He's scoring in the red zone. He's not ever going to, you know, pop the biggest play I mean, he can pop a big play, but like he's not going to take over a game necessarily, but he's exactly where you want him to be when you want him to be there. And somebody who I think is a pretty safe bet to make this roster. So cleaning up the Baker topic now um, to put a bow on that. What I haven't seen from these Panthers receivers is consistently opening up on the sideline I mean, between the um, outside the numbers, I should say from the sideline to the numbers, that traditional big outside receiver, somebody who can do that. Um, they're not hitting verticals. They're not hitting back shoulders. They're not, they're, they're having some luck with some hitches. Even though Sam Darnold was picked off twice throwing hitch with the Jalen Mills, the Patriots corner, just sitting on that route. They're not really hitting deep outs. They're not hitting any sort of search backside in routes. Baker never really did a lot of that in Cleveland anyway. Um, so I'm a little concerned about can this, you know, Robbie Anderson, they're trying, they're, they, you know, they're, they're trying to complete some tougher contested catches on that sideline when you give your receiver a shot and Robbie Anderson hasn't been able to come down with any of them. So we'll see. I need to see this passing offense evolve more, but you know, that's where they're at. They're, they're, about to play their second preseason game. We'll, we'll know what this offense is by week four or week five of the regular season. And if they can start hitting, you know, a more complete passing tree rather than just, you know, Christian McCaffrey bailouts on third down and then slants and overs to your slot receiver or tight end. We need to see some production from the receivers on the outside, and I don't know if we're going to get it or anytime soon or what's it going to look like. Just keep an eye on that. Um, all right, Christian McCaffrey, he's got to get some flowers for his performance in New England. Just two really tough practices for CMC. Uh, got a good work. Like, I don't, I, I feel like fans would freak out if I said he got a ton of reps and they're like, what? Why is he? You could hurt him. Um, he, but he was out there quite a bit. Um, he sparked the second melee on Wednesday. He, right after the final kickoff KOR team, and the whole Kenny Robinson knocking out Kendrick Wilkerson event. The teams went to separate fields, Panthers offense, Patriots defense went to one field. And then the, the second group went to another field. And the Panthers had inside run and Chris McCaffrey took a handoff and was shoulder tackled by Dietrich Wise of the Patriots, a defensive end and Christian shot up and threw the ball right at his feet and all hell broke loose. Uh, Christian after practice said, you know, that's expected. It's, it's football and, and things got electric. We'll see what that means for the future of Kenny Robinson, who again really sparked all this and, and had his dispute with Wilkerson carry over from Tuesday to Wednesday. The team has not made an announcement on what it will, the future of Kenny Robinson met rule right after practice said the team is going to think about what to do with him and they did not rule out cutting him. Uh, I think there's issues with him being 
ejected twice, of course, but uh, the optically, when he hit Wilker, Wilkerson, he, he stood over him a little bit, it sounds like, and in a way, you know, taunted him in, in the fact he was knocked out, and that's what Patriots star special teamers Matthew Slater took offense to. He detailed that after practice. While I'm on him, I'm Kenny Robinson. It's been a bad couple of days for him, obviously, for everything I broke down. On top of the fact that he's fighting to make this roster, he's probably the third or fourth safety on this team right now. He needs to have a great day in the preseason game on Friday if he's even on the team still, which I'm expecting he is. We haven't heard anything yet, and um, I have, people I'm talking to don't suspect Kenny will be cut in anytime soon. But maybe he's cut as soon as you know the Patriots game's over or that next day. Uh, you know, we got another round of cuts coming up. So Kenny Robinson, he's on our bad list and he needs to really make up for his lack of practice due to his own hothead and gain a lot of valuable reps in this Patriots preseason game. Um, I want to talk about DJ Moore real quick on the good side. He had a deep 50 yard connection to Baker Mayfield or from Baker Mayfield, excuse me, on Tuesday. You know, Baker just kind of threw it up there and gave DJ a shot. It, it, he more f- like fielded a punt, but he, you know, the safety got turned around and DJ is someone you trust to track a football and at least force an incompletion if it's thrown into trouble like that. And uh, they connected. It was a little big gain and something you think they're only going to get better at. So I'm not sure if DJ will be baker's favorite target but he's going to be his most explosive one from what i'm gathering uh sticking with receivers Derek wright undrafted free agent wide receiver he is making play after play he's had a lot of opportunities due to the panthers injuries at wide receiver still no cj saunders terrence marshall did not practice wednesday he was on a pitch count tuesday robbie anderson did not practice wednesday dj moore has been limited he not as limited as Terrace Marshall, but he's you know, not playing as much as Richard Higgins is. So that has given Derek a, a chance to really prove himself and, and step up and make some big plays. He was rolling with the first team of receivers during Baker Mayfield's first two-minute drive on Tuesday. He was out there with Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore. He caught a, he got a first down pass, too, from Baker. Uh, on Wednesday, he was rolling with the ones in Sam Darnold who, yes, is still getting first-team reps. We'll see if that continues next week at practice. I'm guessing it won't, but we shall see. Um, and he had a really nice touchdown. Sam broke out of the pocket, as he always does. Uh, scramble rules activated. Derek flooded to the right side of the end zone, and Sam just fed a ball right between the defender's ear hole that only Derek could see, and – he got both feet in bounds on the back pylon and and scored. So that was an impressive play. And Matt Rule had, you know, high praise for Derek after practice, just saying, you know, he's someone who is just consistently getting open. He catches the ball smoothly. He's making plays, and that's what you look for at receiver. You know, pretty vanilla description, but if your your boss is telling you you're doing everything in your job well and you keep doing that well, then that's a pretty good review. I mean that he he really has a shot to make this team. Something would have to happen to Andre Roberts, or it could get interesting. But Derek Wright, I think they found a nice little weapon, and perhaps he's just stashed on the practice squad, and they hope he clears waivers. Um, let's talk about Pat Elfline. So the Panthers are dealing with a ankle injury of Bradley Bozeman. The initial fear was that he had some lower leg. A perhaps a lower leg fracture uh those tests came back negative so he avoided major injury there which now this becomes a pain and recovery situation pain tolerance and injury recovery they're expecting him out two to three weeks that sometimes can get pushed to four sounds unlikely that he'd be ready for week one against the browns but definitely is a still a huge part of this team's plans at center going forward in the meantime that probably means this is pat elfline's job and I know Panther fans don't like to hear that. He did not look great against Washington. He, there's times in these Patriots camps where he's just overpowered, and he's all they have. Um, you know, you're not going to put Sam Tecklenburg out there 
you know, that, that's, how val- that's how valuable and, and fragile these rosters are in the league. You know, you're one injury away from your offensive line going from stable to questionable. And that's what the Panthers are looking at right now. So Pat Elfline, Bradley Bozeman, that training camp battle is tabled for now. Pat Elfline, the winner by circumstance, quite frankly. J.C. Horn has had a really impressive couple days, y'all. Uh, he had an interception during one-on-ones that has gone viral. Y'all probably saw it. Just bodied the Patriots receiver, ran the route for him, essentially. Was the same size as like a 6'3 receiver they had out there. And just went out and made a one-handed interception in the back right corner of the end zone. And the young man's cold, and he's getting more and more reps. They're still protecting him a little bit. I'd be surprised if he played in the preseason game against New England. But uh, he just looks the part. And wait till he, you know, hits his mid to late twenties. Those that age twenty-seven, age twenty-eight, age twenty-nine seasons for JC are going to be impressive. And he's already going to have an impressive year. I mean. The, Teams might not throw at him. We might already be there with JC. But when he gets into that highest paid corner in the league type contract talks and he becomes the alpha of this defense, because he'll he's next. He, he'll be he'll be that guy. Um, it's gonna be fun to watch what JC Horn becomes over these next few years. So enjoy him in these origins, in these these young days of his. And I think you can rest assured. Panthers fans that you found a real one last year in the draft assuming he stays healthy but doesn't sound like they've had any setbacks with that foot and he looks fresh strong physical quick for again for his size he's he is laterally impressive complete package it's been fun to watch uh wrapping up with the defense on the good side we got to mention a little bit about Corey Littleton Corey Littleton forced a fumble in the preseason game on running back Antonio Gibson this team wants more turnovers. That's a way to get them. And he's a guy who has been out there nonstop, largely because Shaq Thompson, of course, is not practicing during training camp with the, that knee cleanup, and he's still on the PUP, physically unable to perform list. He has been allotted a ton of reps. He's out there most consistently with Frankie Louvu and Corey Littleton. Or, excuse me, Damian Wilson, because we're talking about Corey Littleton. But those are the three linebackers you're seeing rep the most. Frankie Louvu, Corey Littleton, Damian Wilson. If when this becomes a, you know, when the majority of these snaps are going to be only two linebackers on the field, right? You're going to have four down, maybe a hybrid, maybe, you know, but essentially four pass rushers, two linebackers, and then five defensive backs. And that leaves one spot next to Shaq Thompson available. And right now it looks like it'll be Corey Littleton. If you're going to, you know, then you give Frankie an opportunity to rush off the edge there, assuming, assuming he doesn't come off the field, but they're, they're deep, they're versatile at linebacker. I don't know if that means these guys are going to be able to tackle and cover in space. They're all relatively unproven in this Panthers system, but they've got options. They've got bodies and a a veterans, you know, who they are. I think that's a, a, a good place to start at a position that had a lot of question marks going into the year some bad some just some bad takeaways bad probably hear my minnesotan accent there i'm basically canadian was good um robbie anderson it continues to just be quite nonchalant during preseason we, we talked to him after practice tuesday and he just straight up admitted how he doesn't like preseason uh i'm paraphrasing and and, and putting some words in his mouth here, but I got the sense that he thinks it's pointless. So we'll see. We'll start judging Robbie on September 11th in week one of the NFL season and see awarded him because he's got to prove it, man. Like you, 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 you're talking like a back to back to back thousand yard receiver, right? You know, Robbie is talented, but I don't know if he has, I don't need to do anything in the preseason status or clout yet. But, you know, he's going to stay real to who he is. But we just don't know if who he is is that guy or not. Again, individually, he's talented as hell. He has a lot of traits you like at the receiver position. We need to see that manifest or materialize into a rapport with Baker Mayfield, a complete route tree, and explosive plays. That's what he gets paid to do. Sam Darnold been a really tough couple of days for Sam. And look, it's the same story with Sam, but I, I'm gonna, I gotta, you know, spend a minute on it. He has flashes of sexy, you know, he has flashes of 
really good looking throws. He has flashes of potential. And then he reverts back to the same turnover, Sam, for example, the Derek Wright touchdown I explained earlier that came out at the end of a two minute drill, Sam drove the team, you know, 60 yards and under a minute 15 with no timeouts and was able to get a score. The irony of that play was that it should have never happened because Sam started the drive with a interception. He threw a pick to Jalen Mills, the very first play of his two minute drive, trying to hit Richard Higgins on the sideline. I think it actually might've been DJ Moore trying to DJ more on a quick hitch route to the left and Mills just jumped it, sat on it and the drive's over, but Bill, Bell, Bill, Bell, Bill Belichick and Matt rule agreed to let the drive continue or start the drive over since you only got one play and that resulted in the Derek Wright touchdown. So it was like, great. Like Sam Darnold did something Baker Mayfield hadn't done it through the whole Patriots camp, drive your team 60, 70 yards in a two minute situation and score a touchdown. Sam's the only Panthers quarterback that did that over these past two weeks, or excuse me, these past two days. But it came on the back of an interception on the very first play of the drive. So, you you know, you tell me what what's real. We talked about Kenny Robinson, a really t- bad-looking couple of days for him because you couldn't even see him on the field. It has nothing to do with his play on the field, which sucks. I hate talking about off-the-field stuff that doesn't have anything to do with winning or losing football games. I'm an X's and O's person. I'm a, I'm a roster builder. I'm a team philosophy guy. I'm a, you're either allowing it to happen or you're coaching it guy. I don't want to talk about fights at, at practice. I think they're idiotic. Like I get why they happen and I'm all for that dog and that fight and standing up for yours and having a back and ride or die and being about that life. But man, the same dude twice being the spark you couldn't b- bury your little am- animosity from Tuesday. You had to roll it over in the Wednesday session. You're standing over a guy after you knock him out. Like it's kind of punk stuff, y'all. It- it's kind of weak to me, you know? And while you're fighting to make a roster spot and then a little behind the scenes here, Kenny got kicked out and then was escorted over to Matt rules field, who was working with the offense before leaving by a Panthers assistant and he was just trying to get a conversation with Matt Rule during practice. He's trying to get the head coach's attention to plead with him about I don't know what because you can't. It's not up to Matt Rule if you're out kicked out of practice or not. They have officials there that make those decisions. That's why Chuba Hubbard was kicked out of practice. Then Matt Rule didn't know that until an official told him that Chuba had to leave because they saw him throwing punches. Like Chuba wasn't even involved in the play, but he went over there and you know got scrappy with it and was standing up for his running back and CMC and that was that and Chuba's going to be just fine but you're Kenny Robinson trying to plead your case to Matt Rule who has no power to keep you in practice e- anyway what are you saying I'm sorry like come on bro I don't know I just I don't you know look I don't know Kenny I have no idea what he wanted to say to Matt Rule maybe we'll get to talk to him after the game Friday but pretty weak way to practice and a pretty useless way to make a team in a complete waste of practice time on your part, Kenny Robinson. We'll see. He's got a great story, you know, former XFL player. He had moments last year, but that was, that's a tough look. Let's close with some Dante Brown talk. Uh, This young man needs to have a big day on Friday. He just hasn't, you know, I could make a case that he's the seventh best guard on this team. He's trending towards getting cut. He'd love everything about his size and, you know, the things he can't teach, but also it seems like the things he can't teach are what is holding him back to. I'm going to have my eyes on Dante Brown most of Friday night and try to see if he, has one less shot at making this roster if if he's going to be a casualty here pretty soon. All right. That's everything I got for y'all. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys after the game. We're still working on our podcast schedule. Maybe it's up uh, Saturday morning. If not, we'll have it to you first thing Monday. Appreciate y'all bearing with us. We should be adding some more firepower to this podcast in due time and have a more consistent schedule. Like I said, that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 
with the post game pod serving as that Monday pod, trying to hit you guys three days a week with just instant thoughts, reaction, analysis to your Carolina Panthers. That's that's what we're gonna do here in this space, and just keep building, build a community out here, guys. Um, it's a really fun time of year, and I hope I can provide that inside look to the Panthers with some analysis, and we'll get some film study going once I'm done living out of my suitcase and being on road and living out of hotels it's been eight days now away from charlotte and i got two more left in boston but i can't complain things are cool this podcast was produced by michaela holder my name is ellis williams i'm signing off for the panther tracks podcast until next time y'all take care